all know one set of people that I do not like in the multifamily business. Sorry for anybody who catches this, but I do not like multifamily mortgage brokers. Those little weasels. I mean, they they always are in the way. And let me let me explain. First of all, if you don't know what a mortgage broker is, I'll give you a quick explanation of that, right? It is a person who has connections with lenders and they will go shop your deal for you to other lenders to bring you back the correct terms, right? Sounds like a great setup. Here's the problem. Oftentimes, your deals don't need it, right? So depending on how you're financing a deal, you will have some deals that are just cookie cutter, right? They are, they're stabilized, meaning that they are above 90% occupancy. Um, you're just going to get a long-term loan, an interest rate. Everybody is following very closely to the same standard, right? So they, they are financing the pro property based off LIBOR plus, plus a spread or uh, whatever it is. So if you have a deal that is relatively straightforward, you don't really need a mortgage broker in my opinion, right? Where mortgage brokers do come into play at is when they are helping you with a deal that isn't a cookie cutter deal, meaning that you've got to do some sort of bridge financing or you may need to get... Um, Maybe it's not fully occupied right now. There's going to be something about this deal that's going to make a lot of lenders uh, pause before they do the loan. Then a mortgage broker can help save you because they have these lending connections and they can shop it out to a bunch of people who they already know versus you trying to go find them. But if you're going to take away something for the video, it's basically knowing when to use a mortgage broker and when not to. What I would do if you are looking for stabilized deals that are sort of your, your cookie cutter, find you five recommended lenders, five lenders that do the sorts of deals that you want to do. Meaning if you're doing a, a six unit deal, find a lender that specializes in six units and go get five of them, right? If you're doing a, a 50 unit deal, a hundred unit deal, whatever that is, go get five lenders that do that. And then just ask those lenders uh, for the best terms when you're shopping your deal. That's without a broker. If you do have a broker, um, make sure that it's for something that's a little bit more exotic and you're going to go out and have them shop with their network. Or if there's a scenario where your five lenders aren't giving you the um, aren't giving you the rate that you like or that you think you can, you may want to shop it around with a mortgage broker too. But you have to be aware that uh, you want to tell them, hey, I've already shopped it with these lenders. And so now I'm going to get into why I don't like mortgage brokers. And the number one reason is that they, they sit as a, as a middle person in between you and your lender. And that's the number one thing that I dislike because I can talk for myself. Like I don't need anybody to talk for me. But a broker will say, all right, well, Jason, you hand me all the data about your deal. Then they go talk to the mortgage loan officer who actually going to buy the thing. And then you just got this person that, that comes in between you all and it makes everything take longer. So when you're selling a deal and somebody's using a broker, or if you're buying a deal and you're using a broker, usually it takes longer and there's somebody sitting in between you and the direct contact. I just like to go to direct contact, which is why I don't like mortgage brokers. So that's that's me. If you are a mortgage broker, I understand it. I get it. There are some good ones out there. So I'm not saying everybody, but for the most part, I would just avoid using them if at all possible. So hopefully that helps somebody. I'll see you in the next video and make it a great day on purpose because you deserve it.